For installing Arch, you need to follow three different steps. First, get the ISO. Just open the web browser, enter the official website of Arch and you can just head over to the download section. You will get all the download options here and you have this range of mirrors to choose from. But however, just select the mirror which is closest to you. For example, I'm in India. I'm going to select some, one of the mirrors present inside India. If you click on the download option for the mirrors, it might be having some slow speed. You will get around 89 to 82 kbps. It's around 2 hours. It will take a long time. So uh, it's better if you just download the ISO using the torrent. Now it's easy, just get transmission. You can just go for sudo dnf install transmission. Similarly, if you are on Ubuntu, it is the same thing. You just need to install it using the apt command. So uh, basically it depends on your distributions package manager. I have Fedora, so I install with DNF. When you have it installed, you just need to click on the torrent and it will automatically get added over here. Just open the torrent here. Uh, since I already have it downloaded, I'm going to remove this torrent and close it. Uh, it's saved inside the downloads directory. Just head over to downloads and there we have it. And there's some road work going on outside. It's going on for a long time. So I can't help I have to record in this. Now you might notice another file I have this. This is the signature file. If you want you can verify your ISO. It's very simple. Inside documentations category you will find this installation guide. Just open that and copy and paste this. Now make sure in order to make this work uh, you need to have GPG installed. So just open in console and see if GPG is installed. So GPG version there you have it it's installed now just paste it now you need to make sure that both of these files are in the same directory in order for this one to work press the enter button and as you can see uh, it can't verify sorry because we have to change something that is the version I forgot to change the version over here uh, so instead of the version that is written here you need to change it to 2023 09 01 and um, it will depend on the version as you can understand so just see your ISO or the signature what version is written over here and replace that part that's all done wait for a few seconds and it matches now this is optional but it's good if you do it now we need to prepare the installation medium so we can use a flash drive or an optical disk or with network with PXE but we are going to use the flash drive in this case and search for Balena Etcher. Before you start this process, you need to have a pen drive ready. Make sure it is clean. It does not have any stuff that you need because it will be completely formatted. Here we have it. Download Etcher. And we need the Linux X64 app image. Now, the first step you need to do is just open properties and ensure this is enabled. Executable as program. After it is done, Double click and it will launch the app. Wait for a few seconds, it might need some few moments to launch and that's all. Now first we need to select the flash from file option and select the file from here which is our Arch Linux ISO. Open and we need to select the target. For this one we are going to use our pen drive which we have. There are also hidden devices, don't go for those because these are all system drives. Select and flash. Enter your password to start the flash. So we need to wait 4 to 5 minutes for the flash to be complete. As you can see the flashing is done. It did not take 4 to 5 minutes. It was just showing the first. Then it took around 1 to 2 minutes to complete. Okay, now it's time to boot into the flash drive. Now you have your pen drive ready. So it's now important to get your PC ready. In order to enter this setup, you need to go and press F2. Actually, it is different for different motherboards. So I'm going to show you this list and you can select one of them according to your motherboard. Now, if you don't find your motherboard over here, you can always search in Google and you can get an answer from there. Before your PC boots up, you need to press it repeatedly in order to enter this menu or the screen. Now, as you can see, UEFI is selected by default and secure boot is turned on. For Arch to install, it does not support secure boot, so you need to disable the secure boot in order to install Arch. 
If you don't disable, something like this will happen. This is my mother's laptop and it has Windows 10 installed currently. I'm not going to change anything here such that it will cause inconveniences for her. Now it's time to change the boot device. You have to enter the boot menu in a similar manner. Okay, finally you have booted into Arch Linux and now we are going to install it. No, but before we start the installation, we need to have internet connection. So for Wi-Fi, as you can see, you can authenticate to the wireless network using the IWCTL utility. But unfortunately, I don't have Wi-Fi installed, any modern installed in my CPU. But if you don't have Wi-Fi, it's simple. You just need to plug in your Ethernet and that's all. After all of these internet stuff is done, just enter arch install and it will activate a script which will help us in the installation. So first of all, Arch install language. It is selected as English by default, which is what I need. For mirrors, we're going to select a mirror region from here. So select one that is nearest to you. For my example, it is India. That's it. Go back. Next, we have the keyboard. It is defined as US. Now, if you want something else, you can enter it, press the slash button. You can search for something else and select it. For bootloader, grub is selected by default. That's what we need. For disk configuration, so we are going to use uh, the default partitioning. We can use BTRFS. And disk encryption is not required for me. But if you need a disk encryption, you can set an encryption password, which will encrypt your disk. Let's get back. For swap, it is selected as true. The host name can be changed. Uh, it's selected. It's set as Arch Linux by default. You can send it to set it to something else. For my case, I'm going to use this. For root password, you can select any password of your choice. It is basically your administrator password, which is the one that you use while installing stuff. That's all done for user account. Let's add a new user. First, we need to set the name of the user. So for this case, again, for the password, I'm going to use the same, which I used over there. That's it. Oh, sorry, did not match. Yeah. Should it be super user? Yeah. Yes, because super user means you will be having all those options like installing stuff and all. The administrative options are enabled for super user. Confirm and exit. Done. For profile, we will come back to this later. For audio, I'm going to use Pipewire. From additional packages, you can select any other packages for installation. And for network configuration, use network manager. For time zone, we can select a time zone of our choice so that the time is in sync. I'm going to search for Asia, Kolkata. Just use the slash for the search. It is very easy. Let's go back to profile. Profile. You can select a desktop environment or you can go for minimal installation also. I'm going to select the desktop environment. Here we have GNOME. So we have a lot of options for this. But I'm going to stick to GNOME just because it is my favorite desktop environment. And you can also select these options for more uh, desktop environments to be installed, more than one. Okay, let's go for GNOME. And Greeter is set to GDM. That's all. For graphics driver, you can select anything of your choice. If you have NVIDIA, you can select proprietary or open source drivers and that's all. I don't have any graphics card over here because this is inside a virtual machine. Let's get back. And as you can see, profile is set to desktop. And it's great. You can see the info section of the profile uh, telling us what all the stuff are set inside it. And that's all we need to do. Just go for the installation now. Press enter. And that's all. The installation is done and it hardly took a few minutes. Now, if you would like to chroot into the newly created installation, you can do that. By doing so, you can just use the new system installation from the terminal. It's like using it for installing stuff inside your system by immediately accessing from your live system. So if you go for yes, as you can see, we have it over here. Now if you want, you can go to preferences and remove this. This is no more required. Let's 
go to full screen. As you can see, we are asked for the login details. Now, unfortunately, it does not start GNOME from here, but we can set it to start by default. So, systemctl enable gdm dot service. So, it seems like GNOME is not properly installed. So, let's check it out using sudo pacman sync and GNOME. Enter the password. As you can see, there are several packages not yet installed. Let's go for installing all of those. I don't know why the GNOME installation was not done properly from the profile, but anyway, this should address the problem. Okay, installation is done. Now let's clear everything. Now we can enable this. Uh, instead of starting, let's go for enable. This will enable it for every boot. Enter the password. Done. Now we just need to reboot. And there we have it, your brand new Arch Linux installation. Just enter the password for login. Now you have this GNOME 44 tour, you can go for the tour and see what other features over there. It basically talks about some gestures and all. Yeah, as you can see. Anyway, uh, let's go to settings and fix the resolution. Displays. Let's go for 16 is to 9. Keep changes. Okay, so that's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching, do like, share and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.